for today's lesson, we will be discussing about exponential and logarithmic equations. So we will be solving for the solutions of both exponential and logarithmic equations. So let's define first what is an exponential equation. So an exponential equation is an equation whose variable occurs in the exponent. So what are examples of exponential equation? Exponential equation can be um, 2 raised to x plus 1 equals 8. So this is an example of an exponential equation. It can also be 3 raised to 2x minus 4 equals 27. So again, these are equations wherein the variable occurs in the exponent of our expression. For logarithmic equations, so it is an equation containing a variable in a logarithmic expression. So for example, we can have logarithm of x plus 1 base 2 is equal to 8. So this is an example of a logarithmic equation. Another one, logarithm of 5x minus 3 base 3 is equal to 4. So that is another example of a logarithmic equation. So as long as there's a variable in the given logarithmic expression, then that is called as logarithmic equation. In solving for both the solutions of exponential and logarithmic equation, we will be using the one-to-one -one property. So the one-to-one -one property of exponential equations can be used in solving for the solution of an exponential equation. This means if b raised to x is equal to b raised to y, then x is equal to y. In short, if the bases of our exponential equation are the same on both sides, then we can get their exponents and say that they are equal as well. For example, 2 raised to x plus 1 is equal to 2 raised to 3. Since the bases of uh, both sides are the same, both of them are 2, then we can get their exponents. Say we have x plus 1 and 3. So x plus 1 is equal to 3 as well. So that is what we call as the 1 to 1 property. If the bases are the same, their exponents are also the same. Now let's start with this example. 3 raised to x equals 27. To solve or to use our 1 to 1 property, we need to make sure that both expressions on both sides of the equations have the same base. Since in the first one, this is 3 raised to x, and then the other one is 27, we can write 27 as 3 raised to 3. So that they now have the same base, which is 3. And by applying our one-to-one -one property, since the bases are the same, then we can also say that their exponents are equal. So therefore, we now have x equals 3 for the solution of our exponential equation. Another example, let's say we have 2 raised to 2x plus 1 equals 16. So again, we have to make sure that the bases are the same. So here we have 2. So it's 2 raised to 2x plus 1. So we have to rewrite 16 wherein the base is also equal to 2. So we know 16 can be obtained if we raise 2 to 4. Okay, so 2 raised to 4 is equal to 16. So since now their bases are the same, we can now get their exponents. So 2x plus 1 and then equate it to 4. So they are also equal. And then let's just solve for x. So 2x equals 4 and then minus 1. So we have 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by 2. You now have x equals 3 over 2 as the value of x or solution of our exponential equation. Another example, let's say we have 3 raised to 3x plus 6 equals 1 over 729. So as you can see here, the other side of our equation is a fraction, which is 1 over 729. Now the base of the other expression, or the expression on the left side, is 3. Since it's a whole number, we have to make our 1 over 729 into its exponential form, wherein it's also a whole number. The base is also a whole number, which is 3. So with that, since this is a fraction, meaning we're able to get this with a negative exponent. So what we will do is, you write 3 raised to 3x plus 6 here. And then 1, one over 729 can be written as 3 raised to 6. So we have here 3 raised to 6. And since this is a fraction, in order for us to get the whole number, we have 
to make or get the reciprocal of this and then make the exponent negative. So we have here 3 raised to negative 6. So 1 over 729 in its exponential form, wherein the base is a whole number, is 3 raised to negative 6. Now since the bases are the same, we can now get their exponents. So we have 3x plus 6 equals negative 6. Move 6 on the other side, 3x equals negative 6 minus 6. 3x equals, this is negative 12. Then divide both sides by 3. We get x equals negative 4. So this is now the solution of our equation. Now let's go to logarithms. Let's say we have your logarithm of x, base 2 is equal to 3. Now in order for you to solve this, you have to transform it into its exponential form. So remember, where is the base, where is the argument, and also where is the exponent. So here we have x is the argument, so we have x there, which is equal to base raised to the exponent which is 3 so the base is 2 and then the exponent is 3 so from here you can now solve this you can just simplify first 2 raised to 3 and that will give us 8 and that will now be the value of x so that is how you solve for the logarithm so all you have to do first is to transform it into its exponential form and then solve for the variable another example let's say we have logarithm of x plus 5 base 4 equals 3. So let's do the same thing. Let's write it into its exponential form. So we have here x plus 5. This is the argument. Equals, then we have the base, which is 4 raised to 3. And then you simplify this. So we have x plus 5 equals 4 raised to 3 is 64. So we have here 64. Then you move 5 on the other side. So 64 minus 5. So that will give us 59 as the value of x. So 59 now is the solution of our logarithmic equation. Another example, let's say we have logarithm of x plus 12 base 4 plus logarithm of x base 4 equals 3. Now as we notice here, we have two logarithmic expressions on one side of the equation. So we cannot write this into its exponential form. So what we will do first is to simplify our logarithm. So how are we going to simplify? In simplifying, you have to take note of the loss of logarithms that you can apply in this given example. Now notice that both expressions have the same base which is 4 and they are connected with addition. And with that, we can use now the first law of logarithms or the law of product wherein we can combine the sums of the logarithms by multiplying their arguments. So what we will have here now is it's combined first. So logarithm of and then in combining we have to multiply the arguments. So x times x plus 12 so that will give us x squared plus 12x and then just copy the base which is 4 and then equal to 3. Now after that, we can now write this into its exponential form. So you get the argument, x squared plus 12x equals, then you have the base which is 4, and then the exponent which is 3. Now let's just simplify this, so we have x squared plus 12x equals 64. Then move 64 on the other side, and then equate everything to 0. So we have here equal to 0. Now notice that the equation that we have here now is a quadratic equation. So in order for us to solve for x or the solutions, we have to factor. So we will be factoring out this equation. So think of the factors of negative 64 that when you add the answer is 12. So we can consider 16 and 4. So 16 should be positive and then 4 should be negative. So that when we add, the answer is a positive 12. And then to solve for the x, we have x equals or x plus 16 equals 0. And that will be x equals negative 16. And then on the other one, x minus 4 equals 0 or that will be x equals 4. Notice that we have two values of x. Now we have to check if these values are really the solutions of our functions. How are we going to check this? You just have to substitute it to our logarithm. So we have there negative 16. If we substitute negative 16 into our arguments here, so I will have here logarithm of negative 16, base 4, and then on this one, negative 16 plus 12, so that will give us negative 4 as the argument. 
Now, after substituting negative 16, notice that what we have now is logarithm of negative 16 base 4. So, as you can see here, the arguments now is negative. And as what we know with logarithms, the arguments should always be a positive or greater than zero. Because it's not possible for us to get a negative argument if the base is positive, even though we're raising it to a negative exponent. So, that means negative 16 is not part of the solution because it fails to satisfy the properties of our argument, which is it should only be a positive number. So therefore, we cannot consider negative 16 as a solution. So for our final answer, the only solution of this given quadratic of this given logarithm is x equals 4. So you really have to check if the given or the answer that you obtain is really a solution by substituting it to the given logarithm. A okay, last example. Let's say we have logarithm of x minus 1 squared base 3 is equal to 2. So what we can do here is again observe the given. And if you can apply a certain law of logarithm then do it first. So notice that there is an exponent in our argument. So if you're going to recall the laws of logarithms, we can apply here the third law, or law of the power. So it states that if the argument is raised to a certain exponent, you can just put it in front of our logarithm. So that's what we will do here. So the 2 here, we'll move it in front. So that will be 2 times the logarithm of, then we'll just have x minus 1 cubed equals 2. Now after using the third law here of logarithm, what we can do next is, let's divide both sides of the equation by 2. So that we can cancel out this one. Remember, 2 is multiplied to the logarithm. So that's why we can cancel this. So we will now have logarithm of x minus 1 base 3 equals 1. And from here, finally, you can now transform it into its exponential form. So we have x minus 1 is equal to 3 raised to 1 or x minus 1 is equal to 3, or x is equal to positive 4. So that is now the solution of our logarithm. So just remember, whenever you're solving for logarithmic equation, you have to determine first or identify if there's a certain law of logarithm that you can use in order to simplify before you can solve for it. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about logarithmic and exponential equations and see you next time.